I did start clicking through a lot of your channel. And some of the reasons you're not monetized are actually pretty obvious. I recently did a video on my first month of being monetized and at the time of this recording, it has 37,000 views and almost 900 comments. I'm still a fairly small channel and so for me, that's a ton of remarks. While a lot of you shared encouragement or congratulations, which means so much to me, a lot of you shared your journey and your frustrations with growing towards monetization. And being the rabbit hole person that I am, I did start clicking through a lot of your channels, looking at your comments and seeing why it was you weren't getting the results you weren't. And some of the reasons you're not monetized are actually pretty obvious. Welcome to my channel, I am Sierra, and I like to try stuff. I like to try travel, I like to try trends, I like to try on clothes, and I'm trying YouTube. This is a video series where I talk about my YouTube journey and hopefully we can learn from each other and help each other grow. So while I come from a place of hoping you're gonna do well and encouragement and support, I'm not gonna sugarcoat today's video. Today I'm going to address some of the challenges that you mentioned that you're having on that video and what I think you can do to fix them. Now I do believe in kindness, so I'm not going to call anyone out specifically, but you might hear something about your channel in this because I click through a lot of those comments. Why should you listen to me? Um, Because I'm old and I know stuff. <laughs> But seriously, you can hear this kind of feedback from people that have been way more successful, way more quickly. I am in the trenches with you and maybe I'm just a half step ahead of you. So I feel like I've really got a pulse on what you're going through because I'm going through it with you. But that being said, I am really new to this. I've only been on YouTube since 2023 and just recently got monetized. So I'm not the end all be all expert. So of course, take that with a grain of salt. That being said, let's go. Okay, well, number one reason you're not monetized is not meeting the criteria. So, of course, that's watch hours and subs. Just to review quickly, if you're doing long form, that's 4,000 public watch hours in the last 365 days. If you're doing short form, it's 10 million views in 90 days. And then along with that, it's 1,000 subscribers. The most common comment I got on that video was, I've got my watch hours, but I don't have my subs, or I've got my subs and I don't have my watch hours. So let's look at those. Actually, interestingly, I felt like it was evenly divided. I didn't feel like one was more prominent than the other. I happened to reach my subs before I got my watch hours, but it really seems like it's split. So for those of you that don't have enough watch hours, here's what I saw. Some of you are doing really short, long form videos. You're posting in the long form section and you're posting like two to four minute videos. You're not gonna get the watch hours because your videos are too short. The other thing I saw is that you're not really using long form at all. You're using the shorts. 10 million watch hours from short videos in 90 days that seems really, really hard to me. And I know there was a comment that blew up in my channel about someone that had done that. They were posting regularly and they were able to monetize quickly. So I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just thinking that sounds really challenging. So if your strategy is to use short video, remember that's a lot of views that you're gonna have to get. A million is a big number. And that 90 days is a short amount of time. So for those of you that have those really short videos, I would encourage you to, add an intro, add an exit, add why people should subscribe, just add a little bit to it, make it a little bit longer. If people are only gonna watch half of your video, which is the average watch duration, you're gonna get double the watch hours if you double your video. Does that make sense? So if you're only focusing on shorts, I think that's really hard. I would add some long form in there, just my two cents. Okay, reason two you might not have enough watch hours is people are just dropping off too quickly. We do know that the average watch percentage is about 50%. And if you Google different statistics, they range from 40 to 60, but that 50% keeps coming up. So that being said, if people are watching much less of your video, that's something you might wanna take stock of. People also will drop off in the first 30 seconds, and that's pretty typical because either they click and they can't watch it at that moment, or they click and it's not what they thought it was gonna be, or they click by mistake. <laughs> I hope you didn't click my video by mistake, but it happens. But anyway, get familiar and comfortable with that analytics page. Again, that's on the YouTube studio app on your mobile or on the desktop. It's all part of the youtube.com platform and really get into where people drop off. If a lot of people drop at a certain point, I remember that first 30 seconds, you're going to have a lot of drops but then it should kind of steadily go. As a help in being transparent, I'll show you a couple of my videos that have done pretty well and what the drop-offs are. So if you're not already familiar with the analytics page, go ahead and click on your video and click on analytics and then engagement. 
and then scroll down and look at the percentage of people that are watching all the way through. So I recently did a vlog of a trip to London. And if you look, you'll see that initial drop in those first 30 seconds, which I already talked about. And then it's pretty steady the rest of the way. This is actually a great performing video for me because you don't see a real steep drop off at any point and a lot of people stay towards the end. Now I have about a 50% drop at a minute, ugh, which isn't great. So I might go back and see what I did at that point. And then the average percent viewed, again, we know that that's around 40 to 60%. This is 39, so it's on the low end, but it's still within range, but obviously I can improve some here. Now, how do you improve your percent viewed? Could be your content, could be your pacing, could be your editing. There are a lot of different things you can do to improve. By contrast, my monetization video only has a 24% average view duration. So what does that tell me? Early on in that video, I did answer the question to my thumbnail, which was how much YouTube paid me my first month. And looks like people left after that, quite a bit of them. It's also really interesting to check your spikes because that could be something that people rewatched or wanted to see again. One thing that also might help you in getting your watch hours up is, is go back through your video history and see which video performed better than any others. I had some of you say, you know, I've had one viral video or one video that really stood out. Why? Is it your thumbnail, your packaging, your hook? Was the content better? What was it about that video? And can you replicate something about that? So checking your analytics does require a little bit of what does this mean type thinking. And there's no one answer to keep people watching longer, but if you can see where people are dropping off, maybe you can make some adjustments there. One reason we really do know that people don't watch longer videos and drop off is the quality of the video. And by quality, I don't mean crazy editing and fancy tech that you have to have. I am recording on my iPhone with a ring light. That's it. And I'm editing this in iMovie, which was free on my Mac. If you wanna see my video about how I haven't paid anything for YouTube, here's a video I put together on that. Your videos comprised of two different things, your audio and your visuals. I am not using a microphone right now, but I am in a room that has carpet and has a lot of texture to absorb the sound. One big mistake I see a lot of you making is you record in your kitchen without a microphone. If you're in an area where you're having a lot of background noise or feedback is coming in, that's gonna take away from the sound experience and the quality of the video from an audio perspective. The other thing that's a really easy fix is just make sure you're in a room with a lot of textures and a lot of absorbency. If you're recording from your kitchen and not using a microphone, you have flat floors, you have flat cabinets, that sound is bouncing and echoing. It's not pleasant to listen to. One of my favorite podcasters, she would record in her closet. Why the closet? Think of all the textures in there and how good that sound quality sounds when it's being absorbed by all your clothing. I'm not saying you have to go record in your closet, but just pay attention to how your audio sounds. It's more important than you think. And as for quality, I'm just recording on my iPhone right now and hopefully it's good enough, but I am in a well-lit room with extra lighting. No one wants to sit and watch a dark grainy video. If you don't have extra lighting, I am facing a window. So I actually pulled up a piano bench and I'm sitting in front of a window on our second story. Natural light is great. So by comparison, I turned off the ring light and you can see it actually still pretty good, which is that natural light, but I do like like what the ring light does to balance my features a little bit. I'm turning 50 guys, I need some help. And lastly, the orientation of your video on the long form. I saw so many of your accounts where you are filming and posting long form video in vertical format, like you would for a story or for a YouTube short. Why, why are you doing that? Just flip it. I don't wanna sit and watch something in long form either on my TV or on my phone with the black edges on the side. And I think you probably know this, but a lot of people watch YouTube on their TV. One recent stat said as many as 40% of YouTube watchers are watching on their TV. So we talked about the question, I don't have enough watch hours. Let's answer the question, I don't have enough subs. So a lot of these fell under what I will call faceless channels. And you probably are familiar with that. It's basically like, I'm a face channel. You see my face, I'm the person. So a lot of channels that you have are, you know, art or anime or a how-to, and you're not showing yourself. People may come for the experience or to learn what you're showing them how to do, but they're not coming to see you, if that makes sense. Number one, my question to you is, would you consider showing your face? Would you consider doing an intro or an outro? I know one of you have a plant channel and you were showing a tour of your house plants, and I said, what if you just in the beginning said, hi, my name is, and I'm gonna give you a little tour of my house plants, and I'm really excited to show you. 
flip the camera around, show all the plants, and at the end say, thanks for joining the tour of my house plants. My daughter is a tattoo artist and she promotes herself on social media. Initially, her channel just started out showing her work. When she added herself, her views increased quite a bit because people started understanding who the artist was and started subbing because of her. And on the how-to channels, now those are searchable terms that people may be coming to find out how to do woodworking or catch a fish or some of your channel content they may be looking for. But why would they subscribe if they got the answer to their question? You need to give them a reason to subscribe. So if they searched how to fill a hole, I don't know, what do people search for? <laughs> and you had a video on how to fill a hole. At the end of the how to fill a hole video, you could say something like, and next week, if you subscribe, you're gonna learn how to change a tire or something that you think people might search on next week. These are terrible examples. You could tease a series that you're running. My video on how to fill a hole is the first in my series of 10 videos on how to survive in the wild or how to do home repair for young adults or you know whoever your target audience is. So just some suggestions. Of course, you have to keep within your own comfort zone and what you're willing to do, but these are just some ideas that I had. Okay, so that addresses those of you who came to that video and talked about not meeting the criteria. There were also a lot of you who came to my channel and just commented about where you were in the journey. So many of you said you're starting, many of you said you're recommitting, and then a lot of you said you're grinding. And I do wanna talk about that word because it came up quite a bit in the comment section. I'm here grinding. Okay, why are you grinding? I mean, I get it. There's a lot of time and effort that goes into having a YouTube channel. I'm spending about 10 hours a week recording, editing, posting my video, but I would never refer to it as a grind because if I'm grinding, what am I doing here? That 10 hours is time that I'm not spending with my boyfriend, I'm not spending with my kids, I'm not doing other things that I love, I'm not walking my dogs, I'm not working out, I'm not doing the other things that are important to me. So if I don't love it, why am I doing it? I love making videos. I love thinking about them. I love writing up the script. I love the recording of them. I love this moment right now with you. And the editing, I love the editing. Hours will go by and I'm not eating or drinking or moving from my chair. My watch is going off. It's time to stand up. Guys, I'm here because I love it. If you're not here because you love it, I think you have the wrong mindset. I would just say, check yourself. Why are you doing this? Ali Abdal just posted a video recently where someone was commenting how they didn't have time to start a YouTube channel. And he basically said, well, why do you want to start a YouTube channel? Is it because you love it and you just can't see yourself not making videos? Or is it because you want to make money? And if it's because you want to make money, that is the wrong reason to be here because there are such more productive, reliable ways to make money, like through investing, through second jobs. YouTube is not a sure thing. Is it nice to be monetized and to be recognized and to get a little extra money? Sure, of course. But if that's your only goal for being here on YouTube and YouTube has become a grind for you, I love you. I'm so glad you're here, but check yourself. This is a little embarrassing to admit that, you know who the biggest fan of my YouTube videos is? Me. <laughs> Sometimes I sit there and just watch my videos back because I love having made them and I love watching them. And yeah, that's a little embarrassing to admit. Can you relate? Hopefully I'm not alone in that. Okay, the last reason I think you're not monetized is it's too soon. You're too new. Are there channels that, yeah, I posted two videos and I'm monetized or it took me four weeks to get monetized or eight days to get monetized? Of course there are. So sorry to tell you, you might not be that person. You can watch my monetization story here, but it took me a long time. It took me more than a year to get monetized. Some of you commented, I've been doing this for two months and I'm starting to get discouraged. What did you think was gonna happen in your first two months? I'm sorry, I say this with love, but what did you expect? I still am producing videos that don't get 500 views. If you're already getting discouraged and you haven't been doing this very long, here are a couple of reasons why and what you can do to fix it. Number one, your pace isn't sustainable. If you're investing too much of yourself and it's harming other parts of your life or you're losing sleep or it's damaging your relationships, you're gonna have to cut back a little bit. Ideally, you're gonna post once a week for a long form video, but if you can't sustain that pace over time, you're gonna burn out. Maybe you need to simplify your videos and not edit them so much. I know one of you mentioned you're a perfectionist with editing, so it's hard for you to get videos out. Here's a little secret. They don't have to be perfect. And while you do want high quality, there's also something that is very valuable about just being able to sustain a regular pace. How many hours can you realistically devote to YouTube and sustain it? 
The other reason you may be feeling discouraged is you had expectations that aren't realistic. So were you expecting thousands of views from your first video? Were you expecting monetization much more quickly? Remember, you can only control your attitude and your effort in your video production. You can't control the results. So I say this with love, but you got to let go of the results a little bit. That doesn't mean you can't be trying to improve or try and figure out how to get better results. Of course you want to be doing that. But sometimes you're going to have a video that you didn't think was going to do very well and it's going to skyrocket. And sometimes you're going to have a video that you put a lot of work into and you feel really proud of it and it just bombs. The one bit of encouragement that I can share, and this is totally anecdotal, but I think when you start clicking through, you'll see this too. Go to YouTube channels that have been in existence for five, six, seven, eight, plus years and who are still posting regularly. I dare you. Here's what you're gonna notice, prove me wrong. If they have been around that long and they are still posting regularly, it's a successful channel. Okay, what does that tell you? That when you stick around and you're consistent, the results will eventually happen. So I would just say if you are getting discouraged, check your cadence, check your expectations. You might need to reset both. I really enjoyed randomly clicking through and seeing what your channels were about. There are so many channels out there that are content that I have no understanding of. A ton of you do anime, woodworking, motorcycle riding. Y'all, these are videos that I would not go search for or find on my own. It's so fun to see what you all are into. I had a great time just clicking through and giving my two cents. Clearly, I'm not an expert. Clearly, I'm still a small channel. But if I can help give you some feedback, go ahead and drop a request in that comment section and I'll do my best to tell you what I see. Likewise, I'll ask the same of you. If I could do a better job, let me know. What could I improve on? What did you like about this and what didn't you like? Please consider subscribing if you found this video enjoyable or maybe you didn't and you want to give me a sub because you feel sorry for me. I'll take that pity sub. <laughs> I'm not above a pity sub. If you missed the video where I did talk about my monetization journey, I'll share that one here so you can watch it next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.